Alrighty then, I thought I'd do a video on um, welding the hole. Um, <clears throat> start off by saying, you know, it's a disclaimer that I'm getting better with aluminum, but it's not a, it's not as easy a material to work with um, as, as some others. It's so porous, you know, and light, and it transfers heat really quick. You know, the heat is, um, uh, dissipates really fast and what I found is, especially in the the weather and the temperatures that I'm working um, you know I'll preheat the metal and I'll literally have uh, moisture rolling back into, into um, droplets when I heat the metal and then I could leave that for 10 minutes come back and I have that moisture is back so you know there's a lot of preheating at least for me, um, just to try and keep it clean and free of moisture when you're welding. Um, so you tend to want to, you know, if you start welding in an area, you know, you preheat the area around it, and then you end up um, better off if you just continue welding as long as you can without stopping, you know, because that <clears throat> that moisture tends to back off with with the maintained heat of the of the arc itself being you know the energy being put into the metal so but you know I definitely don't I wouldn't brag about my welding and I find I found some things such as the spool gun that created some issues at first that I, I struggled through for quite a while and then kind of figured out at least on this Parker gun this is probably the only real bad thing I would I would have to say about this it's just that it's almost uh, non-functional with the cover on it. Um, it hangs up on the cover and I tried figuring out ways to, to keep that from happening and loosening it up. You know, it's just plastic so it's, it's really hard to figure on, you know, to modify. But um, really can't weld with the cover on it. Which kind of sucks because you have debris and you have sparks and stuff flying and you know, you'd rather keep your, your wire clean from dust and and everything is flying around but just couldn't really make that happen so I'm just dealing with it it doesn't seem to be a problem so far you know I'll blow it out with my air gun my air hose um, also when you're welding especially upside down um, your little particulates that you know your slag and stuff coming off your welds your sparks get down in here and they'll actually short this this cone out and this cone is isolated electrically from uh, the, comp the wired fed feeding components. And when that slag gets down in there, it, it actually internally arcs to this. <clears throat> and in certain situations, I found that you, uh, you know, it actually worked best when I put this cone against the metal in an inside corner and, and used the, 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 the boat metal itself as a guide. To pull the, <clears throat> the the bead and when it shorts out internally as soon as that touches the metal you it sticks because it's actually arcing and um, you, you know when you finally clean it out um, it works again so the other thing about aluminum welding you know if you're not familiar with it is that getting your heat right and your wire speed feed and your the speed of your uh, you know moving the weld it's it's pretty fast process in other words you know when I lower the heat and the wire speed to try and slow down how fast I have to move it just doesn't seem to work out right so I end up increasing everything finding a sweet spot but then I'm still moving fast well when you're talking about being especially after I got the, the deck put on and trying to do this inside corner um, while being up inside the hole you know also considering that I've got this bulkhead that I've used for bracing now I'm trying to get up inside of there and weld that inside corner um, it worked out okay but it's not ideal you know and I I set up a fan to try and move the smoke in and out and to hold my breath a lot, you know, right after pulling a bead for a while, you know, so the, so it would clear out enough to get enough fresh air to breathe, you know, 
which I'm sure, you know, it's basically a confined space and I'm sure people do it for a living have have a hood that brings air into the hood and all that, fresh air with filter systems. I looked into them and I'm like, I'm not going to buy that for one project, you know. So, um, you know, it, it went all right, but it, it definitely has its struggles, you know. And what I've been doing is basically just trying to do the inside welds as if they're the seal, you know, they're that's the, the, the strength point because the outside, you know, unless I leave beads, you know, if I want to smooth out the hole and make, and make it flow, <laughs> you know, especially when it's a boat and talking water flowing over it, um, you know, I'm not probably not going to leave a lot of material on the outside. So if I leave the material inside here, you know, as you can see, it, you know, it's a pretty wide, probably uh, close to half inch wide. Um, bead um, gets good penetration, but at least it leaves some material in there just just for strength. You know, at this point, I'm kind of beyond really caring about how pretty everything is. You know, I'm just trying to get a good structural weld without, you know, structurally screwing up the the metal itself. You know, so you know that's the keel to the bottom hole plate in the front. Um, and I, I think I ended up doing three welds on that, two on the bottom, and then one final weld over the top of the other two. You know, when, when you're talking about these corners and such, you know, which I, I haven't done the rear of the boat, I basically started in the front and moved back, and that is probably even goes against what the instructions say. You know, I, I don't really see a problem as long as everything is basically staying um, square, you know, and not moving. Um, so that's just the way I decided to do it. But you have most of these, when you transition from one component to the next, you have differing thicknesses. And when you start getting into the thinner thicknesses, <clears throat> you know, especially on inside corner welds, um, it's pretty, it's pretty tough to move fast enough for your, you know, and to maintain that weld. Especially when you're up in the front corner of the bow, trying trying to weld. It's like right here. This is where the bulkhead is. You can see where there was some welding on the inside, discoloring. This is the top corner where the the lid hits the bulkhead piece. You know, and I get blow through, and I'm, you know, you try and get in there, but the spool gun is pretty big. Your space in there is pretty tight. You know. Um, so I got it covered pretty well, you know, and this this is the top of the boat, so it's, you know, I'm less concerned than if it was down under the water line. But, um, you know, otherwise, what I was attempting to do is get a continuous weld on the bottom side of a good solid bead, you know, all the way across. And being an inside weld, you know, structurally, um, it worked out pretty well. You know, but it, it's not easy, you know, and um, especially when you're, every time you stop, you're cleaning your surfaces again because of the carbon. So a lot of using, you know, stainless steel hand brushes, you know, that's my little welding kit right there. <laughs> Essentially, you know, putting heat to it, getting the moisture out, getting it clean. You know, and even after you brush it, you got to blow it off because it's still got a bunch of carbon where you brushed. You know, and that's not even including what a lot of people might recommend is using acetone and stuff and cleaning it before you weld it after brushing and all that. So, and from what I, you know, in my experiences is I don't, I don't go through near this amount of um, prep and continuous prep as you're welding you know with steel and other materials um, stainless steel obviously not porous at all but um, so aluminum different animal you know it's not as easy to get used to as you might think at least not for me um, you know and I'm new to it I'm not a professional welder so I'm improving as I go along, but part of, part of that improvement is just learning how your welder 
adjustments what difference it makes because I guarantee you from even from brand to brand or even model to model so I have millers at work and 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 the Lincoln of different sizes and and types and doing the same kind of welding with those machines are all different so you know when you're on a project like this it's really hard to prepare for the weld you're doing because you can't really simulate that weld perfectly you know you can set up a um, so, something like this and you can practice but there's no place in the boat where that's going to be happening so it, you know it maybe gives you a starting point but what I realized is you just have to you have to do your practice welds on the boat and a lot of times you're just every time you change from one surface to the next or one thickness to the next you're just starting all over again you know making your adjustments trying to find out the sweet spot of course you got some crappy welds as you're going along trying to do that um, you just end up grinding off and and redoing you know and as you go you're trying to figure out well what would be the best best way to to do this particular weld you know one solid bead a small bead in the middle two beads on top small bead in the middle one one overlapping bead you know <laughs> and uh, yeah it's just not that easy I'm I'm not complaining it is what it is um, certainly wouldn't brag about my welding skills here I, I think when I'm done I'm gonna be confident it's gonna hold water and it'll be structurally sound but as you can see right here you know this is where the backside of my inside welds you know there's places where you have blow through and and you know there's even places where like right here that's just a breakdown of the exterior metal from the inside weld you know of course we'll have to fill that and smooth it out but there's a lot of prep work and you know where you're concerned about looks and stuff you can do a lot of material grinding just to get it down to where you're you're um, right either ready to weld again or to finish it up you know now on the front you know of course from previous videos you can see I didn't have I had a, a pretty big gap here pre previously when I went to fit the lid on you know I had an overhang over here that was essentially this you know um, so I, I laid that on top I tack welded it from the inside from the bottom outside and then I went inside and did my interior welds um, you know the other side was was you know that much thickness on the other side but and then once I got my inside welds done I just took the uh, cutting wheels you know uh, measured from the bottom side marked it um, went ahead and cut it and then I finished grinding it down to where you know this is about the angle that I want to um, you know weld at now you know with the boat flipped this isn't going to be any easier so you know it's great when you have a you know basically a lab situation where you can clamp things down on a table get the height right get your positioning right set up your weld and have a perfect weld but I'm finding that's rarely the case in these with this boat <laughs> you know it's, there's rarely a good position to be in you know especially on the inside of that hole you know because you're you know even though you can put things in there to kind of put your your knees and stuff on positioning is not real easy and um, you know even before I put the deck on you know just being inside there and all the funky angles and positions you have to be in um, it's hard to set up a weld for success you know the first time around and that's if you know what you're doing with your heat and your wire speed you know so you know that's it for the welding it's it's uh it's gonna happen I'm sure it'll look fine when I'm done um, but it's a bigger process than I even think I expected and it takes longer you know and they charge quite a bit for welded holes and I can kind of see why I mean if you're doing it professionally and and you've done a lot of it you'd think you'd be able to refine your process basically by the time I get done with this I think I'll know the process 
you know, and I'd be able to do it again faster and better. But, <laughs> you know, I'm not building another boat. So, anyway, that's a struggle you have as a hobbyist that just wants to build your own boat. As far as the stand goes, I just ended up putting some cement in the back. And so far, I've been able to climb up in the front, no problem. You know, I just put off putting the extra wheels on the front as long as possible. It doesn't look like I'm going to have to for welding the hole, at least. And, you know, the added weight later is all going to be in the back, so I don't really see where I'm going to end up having to put another set of casters on there. You know, um, and really to, to block it level, you know, if you make it straight, <laughs> you know, you're just on this portion of the chines where um, it's straight anyway, you know. And I had thought about putting another bar across to support the boat underneath here. But it's like, it's just been unnecessary, hasn't been a problem. Probably won't have to. So, pretty basic stands, all you really need, but I, I really kind of wish I had to stand from day one. And, you know, I thought about building it a long time ago, I probably just should have. You know, because it's just blocking things, it's just not as stable, and it's not as exact, especially if your floors, you know. It's just nice to be able to do measurements and 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 know that you're blocked up square. Especially from the beginning when the hole's so weak um, that it flexes a lot. You know, and there's videos where I had it sitting out in the sun on blocks and the thing had twisted like two inches. And I was standing off looking at it. It's so you gotta be, you know, careful about those things. Even if you have good bends and a and a good kit to work with to start with, where you don't have uneven um, geometry on your components. Um, you, you may still end up with those kinds of issues. So just block, blocking it up square with a good kit, you know, it just goes so much better and faster. But, you know, welding is definitely an issue for someone who doesn't do a lot of this. You know, I ended up with a smaller gap here to fill. So I just made these pieces, kind of hand fitted them in. Not quite done yet, but they're pretty much in place. And, um, you know, we'll just weld over those and smooth them out. I did end up getting this center line <laughs> basically centered up, which was kind of nice. I had slots in the bulkhead where these, um, these braces under here welded sit down in. So I just had to grind out a little bit of those slots in different places to get the, the thing to move enough. You know, and I haven't welded the bulkhead to the deck yet. I, I could now, just simply because the, these edges are all all welded up. Um, and of course I still have to deal with that gap, you know, which that was necessary. There wasn't any, any better way to do it with this boat. So another piece in there basically fell weld and smooth. Um, like I said, I'm going to... I'm not doing the windscreen, like the windscreen would be the next thing you do on the instructions, I believe. But, you know, I'm going to go ahead and flip it, weld the rest of the hole. Weld the inside first, flip it, weld the rest of the hole. And then knowing that when I put it back up upright, there's nothing left to flip it for, then I'll put the windscreen on. I don't even know how concerned I am about the windscreen <laughs> at this point. You know, I think... I don't really see a lot of structural um, purpose for it, so somewhat unconcerned. Um, we'll see how that goes, but uh, anyway, have a good day.